tribe let's talk the bob marley movie first and foremost i was so excited to see that they were coming out with a new movie with bob marley because they've done like older versions and just really more snippets of his life and his um movement with music and how it affected people so i was familiar with that i've definitely watched um various documentaries uh i've visited jamaica i've gone to his childhood you know location as far as not really going in but just as a tourist um i've purchased you know things in reference to just his memorabilia and just you know being a fan uh, oh, in the sense of saying all those things Yeah, that was Taz, you know. She got to get attention. She got to let everybody know she here. She's a present. <laughs> so everybody, that was Taz. Anywho, getting back to this review. I also, you know, from young, was exposed to Bob Marley. I can remember ages early as four just being exposed to cleaning the house and listening to Bob Marley on the vinyl. Just getting all of that positive vibe and that energy of what Bob Marley brings to, you know, music. So just knowing Bob and just knowing the legacy and the life, I, you know, wanted to get out there and see it. I saw a preview when I went to go see The Color Purple, which was another good movie that I've seen this year. And um, just if you get a chance, definitely check it out. Go support those women and just the whole cast. I hate the fact that um, they didn't get the notoriety they deserve as far as the different award shows. Yeah, so I hate that for the color purple. They just didn't get their just due, I didn't think so. And I think that, um, you know, a lot of people missed the point of that movie and the fact of just um, bringing a new energy to an already made storyline. And the thing about it, it was a book before it's a movie and a lot of people obviously didn't read the book because when they saw the women kissing Shug, who was um, played by um, Taraji and um, Seeley, who was played by Fantasia, they were shocked and they were like disgusted. And some people walked out the movie, but um, literally that was a part of the book that was expanded on and, you know, go back and read it and then maybe go watch it or have, if you haven't seen it, there it is. But yeah, if you haven't seen the movie as far as either The Color Purple or um, if you haven't seen um, Bob Marley, one Love, because that's the title, um, you know, make sure you make it a point to go see it in your own right. And I'll preface that with this review, because I'm going to definitely try to dive into the beginning to the end and kind of uh, touch on some key moments in the movie that I thought and some points that were really missed and or just slightly touched on. So let's get into the fact that I met Rita Marley some years ago at Ziggy's, which is a major nightclub in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, right there near Wake Forest University. I think they've turned Ziggy's either into a parking lot or into a um, restaurant now. I have to check it out. But yeah, man, there were some memorable performances by some amazing artists. I've gotten to see reggae, hip hop, and all types of stuff at Ziggy's. And it's like, that just gave me, that was one of the places that gave me the want or the willing thought to want to go to concerts and see major performances and stuff like that. But I've always been into going to see artists that I love to, because when you go to see an artist that you love, and everybody else is there for that same purpose. It's like, you don't need to come with anybody. You can just be there because everybody there is there for the same purpose. And there's so much love. And it's just that same, you know, vibe, you know, singing the songs together, dancing together, perhaps meeting the artists and stuff and just vibing in that moment. It's amazing. So getting back to this movie review, because y'all gonna have me off track talking about all these other things. But getting back to this movie review, let's get into it. Um, First of all, I went by myself and I had an amazing time. I did the whole ritual of going and getting some snacks prior going to the actual movie theater. But what made me late is there's a lot of um, various like construction going on. And um, of course, it's a Saturday night. People are out in Vegas. I literally left an hour early to make sure I was on time. Well, actually, I left maybe two hours early. And what I did was I went and got a glizzy from the 7-Eleven. Then I went to the little um, bodega right next door. 
And um, I got me some chips, which I got like Cheetos, cheese doodles and stuff. You know, like the stuff I don't really get to eat when I go and do little things I like to do. I get my snacks and I take them too. So I got my cheese doodles, the puffs, you know, got to have the puffs. Then I got me some M&Ms and I got me, what else I get me? Some Kit Kats and I got me a uh, Pepsi because... On a regular, I may drink V8 Splash or I may drink some water and then various juices and different like natural smoothies. Again, like when I want to treat myself, it's times like these, you know, because I know that at the end of the day, I got to make sure I stay in line and try to make sure at my age, <laughs> I keep it together because you can have your little cheat days, or your little your cheats and, uh, and fun. But at the end of the day, you got to make sure you keep it together. Right. Anywho. Um, so I finally got to the location of the movie, which is the Brendan, which is located at the Palms Palace, um, casino. And that's another thing. Going to the movie theater in Vegas is different. And the reason I even go to that theater, cause they do military discounts. So there's a tip. If anybody wants to go, um, you can buy it online or you can go in person. They do it on both. I get my tickets through Vandango. If that helps, you can download that app and purchase the tickets in Vandango. That's a free plug. So just in case you want to sponsor me one day, there you have it. I'm already in love with what you're doing. Anywho. Um, so I went, got the, the tickets, got my military discount, got to the spot. Parking is free if you're going to the Palms to the theater. I don't know about anything else. That's the only thing I've ever done. But again, you got to know how to finagle it because like when I went to the movies to see The Color Purple, I was able to park in valet. But they, and it was free. But, um, and another thing is if you have a Mercedes or a BMW, check with the casinos because a lot of times they give you courtesy valet and a lot of people don't know that. That's another tip. So when I be telling you plug in, turn on your notifications, you know what I'm saying? Hit the like and the share and um, keep coming back. In all my videos, I be trying to give out little tips to make life easier, to make life more affordable, economical for whomever, however they want to, you know, because you don't want to not live a lifestyle where you can at least have some fun. It's not always working no play because that shit will kill you. I promise that shit will kill you. So in the sense of getting to the spot, getting the parking. Now we coming in to park. Everybody's like, you know, I hate follow the leader type shit. I'm the type of, uh, if I see something that makes sense, I'm going to do it. Whether you're doing it or not does not bother me. You know what I'm saying? If I take that flack, I take that flack. But I'm, a, I'm not a follow leader type person. So we going in the little parking slot and everybody's like going level for level. I'm like, as soon as I get a chance to get from behind these. And it was like, it was like three or four cars in front of me, but he let all of us in. And again, it was free. We didn't have a ticket or anything. So I get up to the second level and I see a cut. And I see a little parking spot. I turn in that parking spot. The whole deck is pretty much free, but everybody's like following the leader. So people are still going up. Not my business. Got out, stopped, you know, took out my, um, tef Oh, excuse me. Took out my tail far because I put all my snacks in my tail far. And let me see, I was wearing, Oh, I don't have it around right now, but I had this polo hoodie I was wearing too. It's a polo fleece. So it was, you know, the days like this in Vegas, you don't know if it's going to be hot or cold, but I always know in the theater, they try to keep it cool. So I always try to bring a jacket because I don't want to be in there and it'd be like, you know, freezing. I want to, cause that'll send me to sleep. I don't know for whatever reason, if it's cold, I'm going to sleep, you know? Um, and if I can leave, I'm going to leave. So I, I've never like left. I have left movies before. Like if it was just something that was just like, oh, I'm not wasting my time. I've left, but I wasn't intending on leaving. So I got my jacket, got my tail far, put everything in the bag. And I want to shout out to everybody who reached out to me or said something about either wanting to uh, borrow my bag or wanted to know where I got it from or whatever. And let me give you the details about my bag right quick. Because when I got it, you can check um, social media, TikTok, whatever. I, I did a little video uh, showing that I got it, but I do need to go back and do a detailed review on that tail far. And I will, and I'll tag it in this video and attach it when I actually make the video. 
So that's something I'll put on the to-do list. But that Telfar has some history to it. Um, the owner of the company is from my country, Liberia, West Africa. So that was the first linkage that I had to get that bag. I had to get a Telfar. I didn't know what color I wanted to get initially, but I knew I had to have one because of that alone, you know, just to support. So when I started doing my research and found out that he came to the States, he became a designer, struggled through the ranks or whatever, he really, you know, put in his time before anything. And um, that's pretty dope. The, the owner is Telfar Clemens and he is Liberian and I'm from Liberia as well. So again, Telfar, I've literally sent messages to this guy and perhaps one day because me, I don't like fear speaking to anyone, no matter their status in life, because <laughs> communication is key. And if you need or want something, if you want to make that connection, you reach out. So I told him anytime he's in Vegas, trust me, I'll come and cook for him because the influence he has put into this industry and to be from um, where I'm from, I am grateful to him and I'm proud you know, to know that I know someone of this stature and he's doing his thing. So Telfar Clemens and this uh, company. So I am so used to doing like releases and drops and stuff. And I, I'm good at it. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not even gonna front, you know, and this ain't no just trying to be cocky or anything or no cap, whatever, you know, however you want to say it. But I'm, I'm damn good at doing auctions, winning auctions, <laughs> If you want an auction, because I do my auctions on whatnots too, um, definitely I'm going to put that link in there so you can check me out because I auction off all kinds of things and I started dollar auctions too. Um, but getting back to the point, you know, and saying that and just having the ability to um, get at Telfar, a lot of people wanted that bag, but I have the link because there's, there's steps to getting into his email list. And um, if you remind me, if I don't post it within the time when I put, post this video, I will. Everything I talk about, I'll try to put a link to it or some type of connection video to it. So you guys won't just, you know, hear something and then it's just off the rip. Because uh, I like to educate and, again, keep people saving money and buying smart products that make sense. So with the Telfar bag, when I went and I actually um, got it, it's like the release morning, 902, boom, I had it. And I wasn't worried about it. And the color I chose was a double mint. The reason I chose double mint, man, I don't even want to cry in this moment. So I hope I don't. But if I do, you understand. The reason I got this double mint tail far is because from young, my mother always, may she rest in heavenly peace. She always used to chew double mint gum. And if throughout her life, if any time she wanted some gum, it was always double mint or chiclet. And chiclet is another um, gum that comes from that West African region. And if you're from there, you you know exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of people eat chiclets from that region as well. So um, because my mom loved double mint gum, it was like it would be the best. For me, it was, it was just a no-brainer. Like I had to get this bag. So I've got the double mint green Telfar medium, and it's not going to be my last, trust me. It's just the fact that I just hadn't, uh, one hasn't caught my eye, or I think I've missed two drops that I really didn't link the time with and didn't get the bags. The uh, pink bubble gum, I like that one. And I think recently, I thought I liked the acid, but I thought it would be a more shimmer uh metallic silver and I don't kind of like that it looks like a more greenish gold mm, that's just my personal preference but so I had the Telfar medium bag with all the snacks in it and if you if you understand that that bag was only a fourth full with a fleece polo jacket hoodie and snacks going into the theater and the thing I like about the Brendan is they don't check you for food you know I don't know if they don't check me or they don't check people in general, but I've never had an issue. And sometimes and they serve liquor as well. So you can purchase liquor, you can purchase food from there or whatever. But if you're an avid movie goer, you know, nine times out of 10, you're bringing something in regardless. <laughs> Stop playing. Anywho, um, so I got the um, food, snacks, brought it in. And the thing about it is, is you got to cut through the casino so you can go into the theater 
which is no problem with me. And I always say that's excellent marketing because, you know, sometimes people want to come in and do one thing and you see all these slots and stuff and then you end up spending your money or going broke, however you want to call it. But we love you in Vegas. You do what you do. We're not going to question it. And we're not judging you. You know, I'm just saying that it's amazing to have these amenities just right there if you choose to engage. Um, me, I'm a scary gambler, so I might do 20 here or there, 100 there and there, win something, pull out, keep it moving, you know. But, um, hey, this is the city and this is what they do. So cut through the casino, get into the theater. Nobody even checked my ticket. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, I was I was late because... Um, the traffic and then just the parking delay, just actually getting into park because I first went to valet and they were saying that they were only doing guest valet that night. So my assumption is they had more than one event going on and they wanted to give the preference to the guests, which I respect that. And um, they had a whole nother parking um, deck for us to park at. So being able to park at the deck, get inside the theater. Um, I was there when the credits were still rolling. I know I missed some, but I came in when they had the new... Um, what is it? What is it? Oh my gosh, the one with all the emotions, the movie with all the emotions. <laughs> Normally I know that movie and I'm definitely gonna go see it. Disney or not, that's that's a good movie, especially mental health. It just breaks it all down. And if you understand the concept behind it, you will continue to go and check out the whole, you know, series of movies that came or, you know, yeah, it, it's a good series and um I'll think about what that is. And I may put that in the comments so you can comment so everybody else can know what movie I'm speaking on. Um, let's see. So I walk up in the movies with my Telfar bag and I forgot I had my camera stand in it as well. So yeah, Telfar just ready to go. Bop, 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 bop. I walk up in there, it's dark. But to my first surprise, though One Love has been out, I think now for almost a week, it was not you know filled. It wasn't sold out. And even me, when I went to get my ticket, my seats, and I always tend to sit in a certain row. So when I went to get my ticket, and, and that row for me is the optimal seat. Like I, this, and it's funny how this seat is, it's funny how this seat is always available. And I don't know, it's a blessing to me or people just don't get it. Or I mean, I don't know. But this seat is my optimal seat. And I sat in it, um, didn't even look at the tick my ticket number. I think I was off a seat or something. But the people who had the seat, they came in like some like a little bit after me. And it was like, you can sit in the seat and we'll just sit right here. And I was like, thank you. So that worked out. No, no, nobody. And I didn't have an issue in moving. No, no big deal, you know, because I did come in the dark and I didn't really look at my ticket. So sat down. And another reason I like to go to this theater is because they got the reclining seats. You can climb all the way back, you know, blah, blah, blah. Put your your. Um, your snacks, wherever you want to put them. And there's never, I've never had a, they don't have like security coming in with the flash. I hate that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like either you trust me to come here and watch a movie or you don't. But anywho, I put my snacks up, whatever. Immediately I have to dive into the popcorn because the popcorn and the greasiness of the butter sliding down my throat just gets me ready to have everything else just going in my throat and it's just smooth, you know, going down. I'm just saying, as the fat girl within me and as um, someone who loves snacks globally, yeah, that's the vibe. So, have my snacks, throwing back my popcorn, it opens up. The first thing that I noticed that I can recall um, was the fact that Ziggy, Ziggy Marley, which is Bob's uh, son, one of the elders, I think, Z no, I don't think Ziggy's the oldest, but he's one of the eldest. So, and he's one of the ones that's in the movie. Uh, it's him. Oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta get my memory decks in order because they opened up 1976, which is funny. And I was like two months, two months. So that'll tell you a lot about my age <laughs> right there. 1976. And the issue that was, or the... The scene was, it was two political groups that were causing people to be murdered, arrested, and just caught all kind of mayhem in Jamaica. So it comes to the point where Bob's, Bob's music had been known to bring peace, and both of the sides had asked him to do a concert. 
So he was ready to perform the concert. And the night before the concert, someone came to their home and shot it up. And Rita got hurt and um, his manager got hurt. All right. And remember the, that detail, those two details, as I go on and giving you the details in this review. OK, so when this happens, um, Bob is like scared. He still tries to um, he does the concert, which is very successful in the sense of getting him to the point where he can get the heck out of Jamaica. And in that in that time frame, um, it's like all both sides of the political parties are coming at him. He doesn't know who to trust, you know. And so at, after all of that, he says, take the family to, to the States, which he tells Rita to go to the States, to Delaware, which is also important because when they go to Delaware, these boys are reared and the kids are reared there. And this is where Lauren Hill comes in to one of the sons there. But this isn't in the movie, too. And see, that's why I say, like, it's so much of the Marley story. And this is why, for the most part, this is what I have an issue with. It's so much of the Marley story that's not told. And that's to to the family trying to keep whatever secrets hidden. But it, it causes... Um, I guess uh, a portrayal that's just not true about Bob Marley and the family and the way um, the kids were reared, the things that Rita endured and all this other stuff. And, and those are the things about the movie that kind of tick me off. But I realized too, at the end of the movie, Rita is an executive producer of this movie as well. So in the movie, you can also tell her influence because the, all the documentaries I've seen, and I can say this for a fact, this was the first movie that gave Rita her flowers for all the hardship that she went through. Um, well, in a nutshell, that she went through dealing with a man who was had multiple women outside their marriage and had kids outside their marriage and was, you know, an artist and was hard headed as fuck and was not even letting her know, like, things that a husband and wife should know to try to really have a, a family unit. You see what I'm saying? So I appreciate Rita for being able to um, make sure that portion was in the movie. So getting back to the beginning, when Bob went in to um, London and his family went to Delaware, the thing that's to me that's really offensive is that's how the movie started was like, nah, if you've ever read any documentaries about Bob Marley and some like when I say documentaries and stuff like the ones that he his, himself speaks in and talks about little snippets and stuff. And this is what's really the first thing that really offended me about this movie overall is that Bob Marley was uh, a kid of mixed race. His father was white. His mother was black. Um, from a young child, he was embedded that. He was not a, a product of happiness. He, his father would have, have rather him not existed and rather him not even known that he did exist in order to make sure that he kept his, you know, white self and, and um, status in society, you know? But it was a secret. Like, people really didn't know this until, like, either like closer to when he was about to die or when he was dead, like things came out about his life as far as him being mixed race. But growing up, it was so bad for him moving from the village to move to the city to, and it was the city, like the ghetto in the city, like the hood, hood, hood. If you've ever been to Jamaica, any hood that you've ever been to in America is a freaking joke, okay? The only hoods and, and ghettos I've seen worse is from where I've been from in Liberia. And the difference between Jamaica and Liberia is like, we don't get any like uh, assistance from any countries or whatever most of the time, you know. Only time we, the major money we get from Liberia is maritime because we're the number one place that you can come and park your ships wherever you're from in the world. And if you know, you know. So in saying that, just um, Bob, in the sense of where he grew up and where he came from, oh, 
he they used to heckle him bad like they used to talk to him bad about his race and stuff so the, and that's one of the reasons like when the white people treated him bad the blacks embraced him and the rastafarian religion re embraced him and that's the one thing i do like about what they did in the movie with the rastafarian religion they really respected that to an extent but in the sense of him growing up and just um, hating, he, he started to really hate his white side, like for real. And one of the reasons he wrote music is because he had, he felt he needed to bring both of those sides together. And I don't feel like that's what was really told. It felt like it was just all about love and music bringing love. It was, it was love. Definitely. Definitely. But it was also racist. It was important to him. That's why in the movie when they were stressed, and I do like that they stressed that, that they tried not to let him go to Africa. And he made it a point to get to Africa because he knew that he needed to reach his people, like his true people. He knew that his culture was mixed with both white and black, and he wanted to embrace both sides. And that's why he was okay going to London and living in London. And to be honest, if you don't know, Bob Marley was one of the first um, Jamaicans that really started this influx of Jamaicans into the British culture, into you know, and and that's why I said like, y'all don't know, and and they really shorthanded this man and his greatness and his influence on the world because he was not afraid to go in places where people were afraid, like to go back to Jamaica and to perform after and and. They never even played I Shot the Sheriff, yo. And I Shot the Sheriff is so important to the whole scene in reference to this, the, the way they opened up in 1976 because uh, the real reason Bob left, too, was not only because they got shot up, was because they was trying to put him in jail because they was trying to accuse him of shooting the sheriff. So <laughs> they, they missed out on a lot of the, I guess... They tried to cover up the militant side or, you know, the assertive side of things that really shaped Bob outside of Mr. Nice Guy, Mr. Peace Guy, whatever. And it's and, and you can't take out of the man to not to understand the man as a whole, you know. So I know a lot of you love the movie and I do, too, from the perspective of the, the music is great. You know, they do a good job of encompassing some of his the music because everything was in there i was singing i was i was in love i those look the whole theater was singing for real but you know leaving out key points like why this man really got into music and what music really meant to him bringing the people together and the the children in his life and how they came to be and how many mothers you know are to those children and how many times he really stepped out on Rita and, and that part of that man that makes him a whole, you know, him struggling with his relationships and his emotions and uh, really going out on Rita because there was times he just didn't want to be alone and he felt alone. And then the whole cancer thing. Oh, that that really pissed me off. That really pissed me off. <sighs> if you know Bob and if you knew the, in the means of which the Rastafari religion is, man, this man was not one to, and that's when they didn't show how his diet was, how he ate, how he was truly a man of, you know, what should I say? Um, more of an organic uh, diet, more of a um, plant-based diet. You know, that's the type of uh, Bob he was. And they, they made it seem as if he just got an injury in soccer, and it, that's not what it is. And I don't care if his kids co-signed on the movie or whatever. And I guess I'm going now with the um, conspiracy theory. So call me that. Call me a sleuth. Call me a conspiracy theorist. Whatever you want to in this moment. But everybody did not want Bob Marley to sing this music and to bring the people together, and especially coming from a mixed race guy who still had some black in him and especially walking around with these crazy ass locks going every which way but loose being so happy and so free you know everybody didn't want that so there's a side there's a dark side of bob marley and his travels and him continuing to travel it wasn't just oh he was just doing all these tours having a great life no and that's the thing they didn't show all of that and for real 
I really take to the title Bob Marley One Love because I feel like maybe the Marleys came together and they did this movie because there's so much hate in the world now to kind of bring people back together. Remember that music is love and it can bring it together in so many ways. And that's what I'm taking from it because this was not a biopic. This was definitely not, um, you know, a chronological order. Well, they did kind of, but you know, they went from 76 to 81. That's it. So they really like did just five years of this man's life. Like, <laughs> trust me, y'all don't know the Bob Marley I've come to know in research and development. And maybe I may do some future videos and just talk about his life and just talk about, you know, who he really was, who Bob Nesta Marley really, really was. And not the fact that his family doesn't know him, his kids doesn't know him, because I respect the fact that they want to continue to have that privacy about certain things. Or they may simply be scared to come out with what they feel is true, you know, especially their mother. And maybe that's what's keeping them from, you know, speaking on certain things. But baby, <laughs> one thing I can say, most of them kids are fucked up in a sense of mentally and the things they've done, especially the boys and women and how they treated women and them too stepping out and doing whatever they do. You know, so it didn't come from nothing. It didn't come from nothing. And I hate the fact that family secrets sometimes put you in a place where true uh, stories aren't told and it gets lost in the shuffle. And I really hope at some point Bob Marley's true story is told, like truly told. And um, it includes the part about his, um, what that relationship and the, the, what the relationship between him and his father did to his growth, what the living in the environment of Trenchtown being a mixed breed kid back in the 60s and the 70s in Jamaica, um, how he used music to tell his stories and to influence the world, but to really, because again, like I'm a type of person, I like an artist because I listen to their lyrics and they make sense to me and I can relate on certain levels. Um, so the song I Shot the Sheriff, like has anyone questioned yet why that is not in the movie? Um, and if I missed it in the movie, tell me where it is in the movie because I don't remember hearing it. So. You know, stuff like that. Um, even though, like, Buffalo Soldier, let me see, I shot the sheriff and stuff like that. So none of that, none of the side of Bob where he is, like, telling them, hey, yo, you ain't fuck with me. You think you fuck with me because, like, you know, I shot the sheriff, but I didn't shoot the deputy. Oh, oh, oh. And I know I can't even probably play it, you know, in my intro, my outro, so y'all can kind of listen to the lyrics. But I'll leave a link so that you guys can listen to those two videos and just listen to the lyrics and tell me why you think that they didn't have that in the movie. Why wasn't those uh, songs, you know, just uh, and w like I'm telling you, if, if you're a movie buff, you're a history buff, you're a sleuth, anything type of thing to do a research, if you know anything about Mar Bob Marley, um, research. Just, you know, tap in, comment, because I know I can't be alone in feeling the way I'm feeling about how, you know, this movie turned out to be. And what I'm going to say to wrap it all up is that go see the movie. It's worth seeing because especially if you don't know anything about Bob Marley or his music, you will definitely fall in love and want to go do some research or, or go check out his catalog in some way. But if you feel like, oh, this was the best movie about Bob Marley, leave your comments too, because I want to I wanna know why you feel that way. And I want you to tell me if you felt that they put everything in there that needed to be said. Um, and again, like I said, I feel like it was just a, a one love, so just a snippet, because it was pretty much five years of his life. But I would give it a C- minus overall, and, and that's the reasons why. It's like they didn't give us any lead into that they dropped us in a scene and want us to understand that Bob Marley brought peace and love and then he died of cancer. Because pretty much in a nutshell, that's what this whole movie was about. It wasn't about anything else, you know, and then the guy stealing his money um, from him 
as his manager and him finally realizing and standing up for himself, even though Rita had been telling him for years that the guy was taking money from him, but didn't want to listen to Rita. Um, okay, so <laughs> that's my review on Bob Marley, One Love, and definitely go see it. But don't have the expectation that it's a biopic. Don't go out of that theater telling anybody that now you know Bob Marley's story because you don't. Do additional research. Come back and check this page and check out some of the links I'm going to attach in reference to just, you know, expanding on one of the greatest things that ever happened to music, like for real. And, um, you know, Rastafarian religion, yeah. That's another thing you definitely need to do more research on. You don't have to be a Rastafarian, but just to respect the religion and understand some of the things that were said in the movie um, to a greater uh, understanding. But, hey, till the next video, you know what I'm saying? Y'all take it easy, tribe. Thanks again for joining me. One love, and that's for real. All right? Later. <music>